Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be unpacking this string XOR function that is present in no less than 10 uh, Pico CTF challenges that I've done so far. It might be a lot more than 10. And the reason I'm making this video is that, well, this is some hard to understand code that's present in beginner challenges. And I mean, I've been doing Python for over seven years. And I've, I've sort of had, uh, you know, took a little bit of time to wrap my head around it. So I figured I'd make a video to help the people out who are doing um, these challenges and probably wondering what this function does. So in order to understand it, we really have to go down to, to binary and the very meaning of XOR. Now, what is XOR? XOR is a logic gate, exclusive OR. So this is like one of the most fundamental building blocks of, of semiconductors. And if you were to take apart a, like an ancient calculator, there'd probably be, you know, 50 or 60 of these in there uh, performing um, these logic functions. But, you know, in a computer, there's probably millions. And the way it works is that, you know, if you have two inputs, one of them has a voltage, the other doesn't, um, then you have an output. Now, if there is the two inputs are zero for like, say, low voltage, um, then the output is zero. If the two inputs are one, the output is also zero. However, if it's an or, a zero and a one, or a one or a zero, then the output is a one. So how in the world could you use this to encrypt text? Well, here's how. So just like you have, say, a one and a zero making a one, you could do the same with a string of ones and zeros. So there you go. That's eight bits, that's a byte going in, eight bits in a byte. Let's say they go in in this order and they're written in the same order. So if you think about what this actually means, that is ASCII encoding for the lowercase a, that is the ASCII encoding for the uppercase f, and that is the ASCII encoding for an apostrophe. So take a look at this um, ASCII character table and I'll just give you guys a bit of a warning. With this encoding, I mean, only about, you know, a third of the ASCII characters are actually printable. So the chances are roughly 60 some percent that whatever the output is going to be is going to be some non printable character that's like a line feed shift in device control and, and these characters that are just not going to be working with the Python print statement. So in effect, it will successfully, you know, if you use these two, it will put out a string of ones and zeros that's remarkably reversible. So you could use the same key. If this was a message and that was the key, you could use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the message. Now, I'm not going to leave you hanging there. I've actually got a Python program uh, with the function that we can run through. And I can actually run the function, print the output and show you the ones and zeros. So let's go have a look at that. So here we are in the code uh, that I'm going to use to explain the strxor um, encryption function. But first of all, maybe I'll just show you this. Um, I included all of the different challenges um, from Pico CTF that have this code and like they explicitly tell you, hey, don't worry about this function. It won't help you get the flag. But I kind of, um, I kind of think it's important to understand all of the code that we've been given. So that's what we're going to try to do. So let's go back to our main code and I'll explain how I'm setting this up. So once I run this, you're going to see that we have some plain text that we want to encrypt and we have the key, the encryption key. This is like a, a, a password used for encryption and this is kept secret. And I've converted both of them to binary. Now for the key, I've only done the uh, sufficient length, like nine characters times length of the plain message. So like the same length that matches the message and the message can be anything really. I can just type in hello, maybe five characters is going to be a bit better. And the goal is, let's see if I can zoom in. The goal is that we basically XOR these and that's going to be the encrypted text. So like I'll just do one character. So the first character zero and one is um, one. These are all the same. That's zero, zero. Uh huh. That is a one. That's a zero, 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 zero. So that's one, zero, zero, one. Um, right. I mean, so that could be like, I don't know, that's 17, I think, in binary. And 
that's definitely one of those invisible characters, right? So um, if we were to use the function, I'm just gonna see if I can exit the drawing and try to get back to normal size. I think this is normal size. Let's use this function and let's, um, let's see what that looks like. So we've got the plain text message. We've got the plain text key and that's the only thing the function needs really. So like I could say encrypted message, encrypted message equals to string XOR. Move this down a little bit. String XOR and now we supply the plain text message and a key. Comma key. So let's print that encrypted message and you're gonna see what I'm talking about because it's not gonna have five characters. Like most of the characters will be invisible. Um, encrypted message. Maybe they'll all be invisible, who knows? Uh, I misspelled something. Encrypted message. Encrypted MSG. Yeah, all the characters are invisible, right? So if you remember that ASCII table, I mean, it all went um, in that invisible part of the table. Cool, okay, so like, this is certainly an encryption that requires computers. Why don't I try to print this message in binary? Encrypted bin. And unfortunately, there is no easy way to do it. Um, so we're gonna have to use the dot join and we're gonna use the space there, dot join. Now that basically um, joins into a string, substrings, um, and it puts the space in between. <clears throat> So now we're gonna need to use the format function to get the, um, the binary of the ORD. Now, like if I say ORD of, I think you need to use that. Like that is sort of the ASCII number associated with a letter. So first of all, we're using the format and we're formatting ORD of some variable X and we're formatting it um, full binary. So zero, eight, B, so eight digit binary. I think this needs to be a string. Um, and so that is taking the number, the ORD of each character. And now we need to basically specify like list comprehensions for X, I think for X in encrypted message, maybe C like char uh, might be a better explanation. But I use the X over there. Uh, to be honest, I just got it from Stack Overflow, but I think char would have been a better character name. Um, so that worked. And now I just wanna show you the encrypted binary because um, it sh it, that's gonna be there, there you go. Those invisible characters are really there. And if I type in encrypted, let's see if I can get this to align, right? Encrypted binary. I really want it to align with, um, yeah, I think I need one, two, three more. Ah. I think encrypted binary, like if I write out the whole world, look at that. And that's XOR, see zero one is one, zero, 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 one is one. And that is the XOR message. So that's how the function works. Now, if you don't, um, since we can't read it, why don't we do this? Why don't we XOR the message again? So now I'm gonna say decrypted message and then you just run the same thing, like you string XOR, except this time you XOR the encrypted message. And then print 
the decrypted. And I'm just going to print the decrypted message on the same line, right? That should should work. There you go. That's the plain text. That's the encrypted message you can't read, but the encrypted binary is right here. And then you XOR that and you get the decrypted message. And we can do that, I mean, with a much longer one. This is nice. Oh, and by the way, um, most of that function, all the way up until here, extends the key so that if you were to type in something longer than the key, this is nice. And I think it is long enough. So if we have a message that's longer than the key, this is basically going to sort of um, add more characters that are identical to this. It's sort of double, gonna double the length of the key. So there you go. So the decryption can work for messages of any length with that. All right, so I really, really hope that this video helped you make sense of that string XOR function. Um, make sure to please check out our uh, CTF walkthroughs on my channel, Stuffy 24s channel. And if you like this, like, comment, and subscribe. See you soon.